If you've ever tried Johnny Hutton, you've probably failed to catch a target at some point. And if you haven't, feel free to leave that lie down in the comments. But in my case, almost 18 years ago, just made myself feel older, I failed a shiny after I'd already caught it. You see, when I was a kid, my first shiny Pokemon, after the Red Gyarados of the Lake of Rage, of course, was an oxidized Bronzong that I found on my way back down the mountain after catching Diaga in Pokemon Diamond. Now, well, technically then, I did catch it at the time, but afterwards, somehow lost my original DS along with my copy of Pokemon Diamond, and with it, my first full odd shiny Pokemon. So for this challenge, I'm going to see how fast I can reclaim some of my most memorable shiny fails in the most recent games and in the original regions. These odd colour Pokemon will also be added to a shiny living decks I'm working on, so we'll see what my total is for that at the end of the video. Now, actually this time. The three targets for these hunts are going to be the Bronzor line for reasons I've already mentioned. The Diglett line since I knocked the shiny Doug Trio back in the day while mindlessly grinding levels in Pokemon X with my sound off and didn't see the sparkles. And I assumed it was just a stupid gender variant like Wobbuffet, but that's not any better. In fact, it might actually be worse, but we move. Lastly, the Nidoran male line since I hunted for this one in Let's Go Eevee and never managed to see it sparkle in the multiple days I tried to find even just one. I hope you're all caught up because it's on to the first hunt and I decided the easiest way to start was to go for the Diglett line since it only has two evolutions and limited spawns in its eponymous cave. This should lead to me only seeing my target and little to no chance of phasing on any other Pokemon. Joke's on me because there was still a chance and it was the literal chance Pokemon. You see, in almost every location in the Let's Go games, there are rare spawn slots for Chansey which only gets increasingly more common as your catch combo goes up. This meant that after I had the catch combo of 11 or more, the odds capped out at there being a 50% chance of me seeing one of them instead of either a Diglett or Dugtrio. Needless to say, the first stream went well, but for the wrong reasons. That's right, at the 2 hour 10 mark, just before the end of the first stream, a shiny chanty decided to pop out the ground instead of a blue nosed mole. Not my target, but still something that I needed to add to my shiny living deck, so I wasn't going to turn it down. And after that failure, it wasn't what I was looking for, so let's go with that. I figured out it was the universe's way of telling me that I needed to start with something different for my first redemption. So that's what I did. This time, the Pokemon I was going to hunt would be my first ever shiny I already mentioned, Bronzong. And Bronzor, because I was going to be completing the line. If I wanted one from Sinnoh, then that meant that I was going to have to load up my copy of Brilliant Diamond and learn a method that I'd never actually used before. The Pokey Radar method to be specific. Keeping it simple, the main goal for this is to use a Pokey Radar to find the Pokemon you're hunting and either catch it or knock it out until the chain counter reaches 41. Then you can just keep reloading the shaking grass with the radar until you see a sparkling patch. This means that the Pokemon in that patch is guaranteed to be shiny. Sounds simple, right? Not when the chain can break by encountering a different Pokemon, or just for no reason. Even if you've done everything else right, you can minimize the odds of this happening if you go for a shake and patch that's four spaces away, which I did by using an overlay provided by Austin John. Even with this in mind, it wasn't going to be easy, but I just had to knuckle down and root through the green grass for what would be hopefully my second green shiny of this challenge. And almost two hours and multiple failed chains later, I saw the telltale sparkles I was looking for. As long as I didn't fail this encounter, I'd have redeemed my first shiny Pokemon. What? I didn't fail it. Probably got you thinking I did for a second though. It was safely inside the Pokeball and almost like the game was making up for all those failed chains, the moment I left the Pokedex screen, there was another glitter and patch waiting there for me to catch a second copper companion. A couple of Pokeballs later and I'd completed the Bronzong line, leaving me with two Technically five, but whatever. Shiny Pokemon left to be redeemed. With my freshly renewed motivation, I decided that I wasn't going to let an 8-inch high mole get the best of me. So it was back to Diglett Cave for round two. Hopping back into Let's Go Eevee and starting the new catch combo, all I had to do was keep encountering and catching a little brown lumps and hope that somewhere along the line I didn't find another shiny chancy like the first time. And it was a long line. The first three shinies took me just over four hours. This one though really tested my patience by taking not double but almost triple the amount of time than all three combined having found it at 11 and a half hours in i'd lost all hope of ever finding one but the moment i finally found it was well worth the wait even if i did basically trip over it still <gasps> yes yes 
The curse is broken, and that little lapper snugger had me in high spirits. With a catch combo of 668, the odds were still stacked in my favour to find a friend pretty quickly as well. Which slowly disappeared over the next few hours, leading me to put in some extra time off stream to try and make it sparkle for me. And at almost a 20 hour mark with a capped out 999 catch combo, and very comfortably over a thousand caught, the game saw fit that it was time to reward my perseverance. Now let's just stop for a second and remember what I said earlier. In almost every location in the Let's Go games, there are rare spawn slots for Chansey, which only gets increasingly more common as your catch combo goes up. Yeah, you guessed it. It was almost like Christmas, except it was specifically one of those moments where you have to pretend to like a present that you know you'll never use. The game decided to give me another shiny Chansey that I wasn't looking for. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why don't I just let it despawn and keep the chain going? But while I still need one for my shiny decks, I can't turn down the opportunity. So with it safely tucked away in a Pokeball, it was on to round 3 of this hunt. But this time, I didn't need a Chansey for my shiny decks, so if they appeared in front of me, I could just leave them be and continue searching for a Diglett with a blue Tic Tac for a nose. And these Diglett hunting streams were starting to feel more cursed than ever just trying to find this last one. Which I ended up finding offline between streams. Yes! So my stupid superstitious reasoning actually ended up being true. Almost three hours later, but regardless, at 22 and a half hours, I have my second target that would eventually become a trio. Speaking of trios, my last target was Nido King, or in this case, the Nidoran male that I never found during my first time playing Let's Go Eevee. With maybe 50 plus hours already invested into this before I even started the challenge, and 25 more hours put into it at this point, the tried and true shiny paranoia was kicking in full swing. So, after double checking that I had my lore active to maximise my odds, I was back on with the grind, or not. At this point, I could have stopped since I technically redeemed all of the Pokemon I'd previously failed, but because I hate myself, I was going to do it for extra credit and finish the Nidoran male line like I'd already done for the other two targets. So, with 25 hours, 11 minutes and 48 seconds on the clock, we're officially into overtime, and well over time we go. With a little golden rat appearing about 40 minutes later to try and be my trophy for completing the challenge. Like I've already mentioned, I didn't have one of these already in my shiny decks, so I had to catch it for my collection. Luckily enough for once, a shiny that I did find during my original playthrough was a shiny Raticate, which, for my own sanity, I was going to count as part of my shiny deck so I could skip any others that might appear. My catch combo was still broken though, so I had to build it back up and try and make it across the finish line now that my goal was well within reach. Or so I thought. The thought of how long the Diglett hunt took was still very clearly at the forefront of my mind, so I even put in some off-stream overtime time. And because I'm so smart, I even messed up my recording, so I have the five minutes after I caught the second Nidoran around the 29 hour mark recorded, but nothing else. <laughs> at least I have proof of it in my boxes. I guess that'll have to do. But putting that mistake behind me, it was on to hour 30, the final stretch and the last hunt for this challenge. I really wanted to finish this off on stream with everyone, so there was going to be no more offline hunting from me from now on. Jumping on stream the next day and getting my shiny Dodrio out to try and bring some extra luck while hoping to see those telltale sparkles. It was almost like an act of mercy from shiny Arceus, since at the 31 hour and 15 minute mark, there was a normal Nidoran on my screen. So I caught it, taking my catch combo to 10 more than the funny number. Then I found a female coloured Nidoran I was looking for. Completing the catching part of the challenge at 31 hours, 16 minutes and 7 seconds. All that was left now was to take all of the shinies I caught into Cerulean Cave, catch some XP sacks, because that's how leveling works in these games, and evolve any that I needed to from my shiny decks. Then, lastly, quickly jumping back into Brilliant Diamond to evolve one of my bronzer I found into a bronzong, officially finishing the challenge at 31 hours, 40 minutes and 22 seconds by the time I transferred them all into Pokemon Home. And for anyone curious, these Pokemon were Copper the Bronzor, Diamond the Bronzong, Jolette the Diglett, Jola the Dugtrio, Bag the Nidoran, Mitten the Nidorino and Sock the Nido King. These might seem like random names, but what can I say? It's a cliche of you just have to be there. It also took my shiny decks total from 19 to 26. As a funny side note as well, after all of this, I spent part of my 12 hour celebration stream catching shinies for viewers. One of those happened to be Lucario, and when I traded over that Lucario, 
I got PTSD flashbacks in the form of a shiny diglet in exchange. Only adding salt to the wound when I noticed the nickname was less than 999, just pointing out how bad my luck was on that hunt. And that's kind of why I do this. Not to go on long hunt and have multiple stream droughts and borderline go insane, but to make stories and share them with anyone who listen and maybe even have a few laughs along the way. And as always, if you want to join me in creating more of these stories, you can always subscribe to the channel, follow my Twitch, or just like the video and share your own stories down below. But that's it for now, and I'll catch you all in the next one.